A lot of terms to get in the employment world. We talk about them on this show and the radio show as well. The non-competition clause. Some people don't even ever have to worry about it. A lot of people do. The non-compete is what we call it. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. What is it? It is a lot more common these days. You know, when I started practicing law some 15 years ago, I didn't see it as often. Certainly not for every kind of day regular positions. Right now, many employers, probably most employers, ask employees to sign non-competition obligations. Now, a non-competition obligation, as the name suggests, is a term uh, that you would sign either in an employment agreement agreement or a po uh, policy that says that if you leave or are let go, you cannot work for a competitor for a period of time. That may also specify the the uh, the physical, uh, sorry, the geographical the, the location, geographical location yeah. whether it's in, yeah. in Toronto, whether it's in Ottawa, anywhere in Canada, uh, and uh, so the period of time, the geographical location. But for many people, that could be a huge problem. If I've worked in an industry for my whole life and now I can't work in this industry for two years, that's a huge issue. What do I do then? So that's, we want to talk a bit about that and give people the right information about non-competition obligations. So you mentioned it, it's more common now than it used to be when you first started practicing. So if you took 50 employment agreements now, uh, back then might have been a few, how many would you see? Half of those? So certainly I would see it now for all agreements if it's a more senior position. Okay. But even for pe people that are not in a senior or managerial position, I'd probably still see that in 75% of agreements. So it's very common. So chances are if you're accepting a new job right now, senior, not so senior, you probably will see a non-competition obligation in it. So if you're COO, COO, uh, fiduciaries, that's almost guaranteed to be in Almost there. guaranteed. Wow. Almost guaranteed. For managers, executives, absolutely, you'll see that guaranteed. The next question about the non-compete is enforceability. Is it enforceable? Well, so this is where it gets interesting. For most people, a non-competition obligation is not enforceable. It's not. Our courts have said that we don't like things that prevent people from earning a living. Okay, so because of that, for 95% of people, it's not enforceable. What it is enforceable is for people in very senior positions, fiduciaries, people that are so important to an organization that if they're going to leave the company, it's going to hurt their former damage employer. It. It's going to damage it in a big way. For most people, you're watching us right now, our courts have said that even if you signed it, it's still not actually going to be enforceable by the company. But someone's listening going, okay, then I'll just ignore it. And that's the natural reaction. Oh, good. I know it's unenforceable, so who cares? I'm going to go work wherever I want. Well, not so fast. The reason I say not so fast, because the question shouldn't be, is it enforceable? The question should be, is your former company going to try to enforce it? Because if your former company is going to try to enforce it, guess what's going to happen? They're going to sue you. They're probably going to sue your new company. And you're going to be involved in a very long, expensive, and complicated legal battle. Now, at the end of that legal battle, you're going to win. Because, again, it's not enforceable. But it's still going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to be very unpleasant. So it's not going to be a really good victory. So my rule of thumb is very simple. If you sign it, you have to be prepared to live with it. Right. It's as simple as that. So do not sign a non-competition uh, obligation unless you're prepared to abide by it. If you just ignore it, you run the risk of being sued. Not a pleasant situation. You have to take it seriously. If you can't take it seriously, you want to, or if you can't uh, abide by it, then talk to your employer, negotiate, deal with it, rather than just ignore it. You want to get a hold of Lior anytime. The rest of the team at the firm, 1-855-821-5900, talking about the old non-competition agreement uh, in your contract of work. Say, okay, say I have one. Uh, I've been let go or I'm, I want to leave and I want to be a good boy. I want to abide by the contract, but I got an employer who really wants me. What do I do? Can I negotiate it out? Can I talk to somebody? So the first thing you, you want to do is, is try to address it when you first start a job. So if you can start a job and you have a non-competition, talk to your employer and say, you know, I've been working in, the, in this industry for my whole life. I don't want to be out of this industry. I'll agree not to take your clients. I agree, I'll agree to keep things confidential, but please don't try to prevent me from working somewhere else. If you did sign it and now it's time to leave and you want to work for a competitor, be honest with your employer. Approach them the same way. I'm not going to go after your client. I'm not going to hurt your business, but don't prevent you from working somewhere else. With most employers, if you approach them that way in an honest way, uh, in a forthright way, they're going to be reasonable and you can negotiate terms and they can relieve you or release you of that non-competition obligation. The problem is if you're not going to do that, if you're going to simply ignore and go work across the street, that's when the employer is going to get suspicious. That's when they're going to get concerned and at that point you may find yourself with a lawsuit. Well, the flip side of that coin, of course, is the employer. So what does an employer do to protect themselves, say, from employees leaving and going across the street to competitors? 
I would say for employers, really only use non-competition obligations for your most senior people, for those people that you really, really can't imagine working from some, for someone else because it's going to hurt you. For everyone else, use non-solicitation obligations. Have terms that say that if you leave, you can't go after our clients, you can't go after our other employees, you can't go after our suppliers, and you're going to keep things confidential. That's the best way to protect your business. If you're going to use a non-competition obligation, be reasonable with it. Yeah. Don't say you can't compete for two years anywhere in Canada. <laughs> maybe limited to six months within a certain geographical area, the more reasonable the non-competition obligation is, the more likely it is to be enforced. So remember, employers are employees. You can use that. You can be smart about it. But for employees, you have to be very careful. If you're just going to sign it, you cannot ignore it later on. You have to address it. Be honest with your employer and try to work out a solution that will avoid you being sued. Now, one more thing before we wrap up this topic. The non-solicitation, which you touched on, that is enforceable, correct? Yes. So unlike a non-competition right. obligation, a non solicitation obligation is enforceable and a non-solicitation obligation simply says that if you leave or we let you go you're not going to go after our cl uh, clients customers employees those are enforceable for the most part employers should use them and, and individuals should be prepared to abide by them now you know non-competes more information on the way we'll take a short break 1-855-821-5900 help at employmentlawyer.ca and uh, severance pay